Illuminati confirmed. Boom! So today, my friend gave me some really awesome stuff, including a 90 volt DC motor controller, a fan that he wants me to fix, and a motor that, a planar motor that looks like some sort of nuclear laser. And so, it has a really cool switch to on. It's a very powerful. Very yak on. And that's actually off. It's, look, it's off. And it's still going. He, that's a sander. He also said this motor jumps if you turn it on. <laughs> Oops. That's still going. Also, in the lab with horrible lighting, this is the motor controller, DC motor controller. Goes up to 90 volts, is that or 90 amps. Um, and he, I think he wants me to fix it, but I might not be able to keep it. It has some broken wiring, well, unfinished wiring inside. Since I've decided to stop leaving those giant text paragraphs in my videos, I might as well say that here. Um, I've dabbled in chemistry sometimes when I can't figure out electrical stuff, and so, yeah, enjoy the next chemistry clips. Now it's time to edit this video. So for the past few days, I've been messing with hydrogen peroxide and manganese dioxide, which makes an extremely black liquid when uh, mixed with water. Those two things together, hydrogen peroxide and manganese dioxide, actually produces um, oxygen gas, and the manganese dioxide is not consumed, it just takes the oxygen out of the hydrogen peroxide. So I've been making oxygen, and I'd like to do a few experiments with it. Alright, so I got my setup working. This is a lab with horrible lighting. Um, there's hydrogen peroxide and manganese dioxide reacting in that test tube, which goes through that uh, thing, glass tube under the water, which bubbles up through that funnel into the test tube, and this is all oxygen gas. So if I add just a tiny bit of this black manganese dioxide to this uh, hydrogen peroxide, hope oh, that was probably too much, yep, <laughs> it instantly starts foaming and bubbling up and heating up rapidly, and it actually will start producing some steam, maybe. If you use hydrogen pro yeah, there it is. If you use hydrogen peroxide 30%, it'll actually just explode in a geyser of steam. Woo, that is a lot of steam. And you can see it's reacting very vigorously and producing a lot of oxygen. Boom! <laughs> Foggy. Let's see if it's... Ah! No, it's not even that warm, except it stains my finger. Yep. Chemistry experiment, take two, that'll actually get it on camera, maybe. Woo! Still going. Aw, oh, and then... Okay, so keep that going. That test tube's hot. Maybe I should take the lid off. And now here's fresh yeah. oxygen. Quick. There it goes. You can just barely see it lighting up because there's more oxygen in there. And it's actually using it very slowly. Ooh. Whoa! Huh! There it goes. It just caught full. Oops. Mm -hmm. And I, I put a lot of smoke and stuff. Ooh, yeah. that's hot. Yeah. We get it, you vape.
So sometime, hopefully before Christmas, I want to build a voltage multiplier and a falling pipe. Um, actually, I want to use this pipe for a full-fledged spark gap Tesla coil. I want to use a rotary park gap, a rotary spark gap, because those are easier to adjust while it's running, and it'll help me control the pitch. Of course, I bought my miniature Slayer Exciter coil off of eBay, but people don't exactly sell for cheap prices ones this big, so I'm gonna have to make my own. To help me with that, I made a coil winder out of an old building kit I had. So, it spins the pipe. That might be a little fast, but the battery will wear out. It spins the pipe, and I hold a spool of wire. Oops. <laughs> Which I also need to get. Um, and the spool of wire wraps around very slowly. I can also go both directions in case I make a mistake and need to unwind it. Yeah, and it also breaks the motor. I am also... Woo, is that upside down? Uh, I'm planning on I am getting also planning on a high-voltage transform a high voltage transformer, and I'll probably need a ZVS driver, so I'm gonna do some research on that, and hopefully get a flyback transformer and a ZVS driver for the Tesla coil. That same transformer could be powered by a uh, fluorescent light ballast to make it AC, which will power my voltage multiplier. Because a t uh, spark gap Tesla coil needs high voltage DC input to charge the capacitors, which I will use my spark gap, uh, capac my spark gap capacitors, uh, my Ziploc bag capacitors for, and, um, I'm just panning around my room for no reason, my laboratory. There's my lab coat. Uh, <laughs> and I'll use the Ziploc bag capacitors, so it needs DC to charge those up. And then, for the voltage multiplier, it takes AC, rectifies it to charge the capacitors in, like, a pattern, and then it hi outputs high-voltage DC. Which, come to think of it, uh, I don't know, I might be able to use my voltage multiplier to power the Tesla coil, which would be insane, but we'll see. Mm. Alexa. Are you planning to take over the world? I don't want to take over the world. I just want to help you. That's exactly what ev every evil robot ever said. So a while ago, I learned to make paper cranes. Here's your average one piece of paper paper crane. Here's one that accidentally got its beak deformed, so now it's a seagull and my friend decided to keep on downsizing them, make them smaller and smaller. Here's one made out of a sticky note, and here's a representation of one he made in class that was so small it accidentally got blown off the table onto the floor and vacuumed up. However, I decided to make them bigger and bigger, so here's one out of four pieces of paper, and here's a two-foot one made out of a giant brown piece of paper. And, well, that's the biggest one I've made so far. Ah!